but there, I think there's a few in Vancouver, maybe a few in Toronto, but yeah. that's it for, yeah. for retail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's shiny. It's, it's kind of cool to have Bitcoins in, in your pocket. So does it store like the wallet now? Uh, no, it's, it links everything to CoinFed's website. Oh, it's like the wallet now? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I have a question for all three of you. Two. Wait, um, am, I, am I one of the three? No. Um, I'll give them, but <laughs> feel free to jump in. I, I do. This, because this will, uh, this will apply to you, to anybody else who doesn't. Uh, it's actually two questions. The first one is, uh, how many hours per month of actual human labor do you personally put into these businesses? Not, not what your computers do, but that you personally put in. How many hours per month of labor? And then the second question that I have is, uh, per month, what would you estimate your profits to be? Uh, you know, what do you net after your operations costs? In other words, how much are you getting paid for our basically? What? Point 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 point. Oh, this applies to the trade back question too. Yeah. How much are you guys earning per hour at this? Well, like, I, I wouldn't consider it what I'm doing very businessy. Uh, I mean, I'm, I think after expenses, and I haven't got my latest power bill to like really confirm this, but I think I'm making pocket change. But I, at the end of it, I may end up with a computer that I can use for games. Um, and it, if I was buying specialized hardware, it'd be very, a little bit different. I'd be ending up with obsolete hardware that will need to be recycled or repurposed. Right. Uh, it might cost as much as a computer at some stage, and I'd get nothing at the end of it. Whereas I'm buying a versatile computer that, for now, can mine cryptocurrency and later can play games or do spreadsheets or surf the web. Okay. Or it could be doing it right now along with mining. I'm making about sixty dollars an hour because I'm only working about an hour a month. Uh, in January, it would have been closer to like five or six hundred dollars an hour. But again, if I only work maybe an hour, unless there's a catastrophic issue, something out of the norm, there I, it's five minutes checking the rig, make sure it's running, just keep coming out. All right, next day. And I like we don't have to do many of the, the mining of that sort of thing. So my my revenue is generated in the the brokering of the deal. So I put in uh, forty to fifty hours a week. My wife puts in twenty to thirty hours a week. Another employee puts in about. 30. See, there's the problem with it. It's a full scale business. Right. The, the networking and the and the the, the bartering that we do. Um, but the, the amount of money that my corporation makes from it is, is provided. I would tell you in private. It's for those personal. Zero two. Yeah. Do you want to answer? Does it have First, I, I don't know if I can have one. Three G. I spent three point four six pesos buying. No, no. This was one you bought for your dad's shop, right? No, I just want and got two dollars worth of I can sit I figured I could probably build one. Uh, so I made back bottom time bumps. The I I still the fly uh, at an average uh, Bitcoin value of about eight hundred dollars before it fell. Okay. Uh, I got my investment out. And yeah. uh, I'll now I'm at uh, getting close to two bitcoins yeah. again yeah. Sure. in my wallet. And, 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 and this month, and the cost of the is very keeping up. In other words, the cost of electricity mm -hmm. will be the, uh, the, um, the value of bitcoin. Right. So at the end of this month, it's a bit of a Unless something changes, uh, I'll be turning off the value of the money. So do you think, Alan, that if one of the big values of bags? Decided that they wanted to be the biggest. Let you to add. Uh, yeah, Is it on? Okay. So, do you suppose that, let's say, the big five banks decided to get in on the mining business, uh, given that they already have a gigantic electronic infrastructure and, and paid staff? Um, do you think that you guys would be driven out of the market? Banks would never mind. They don't have my specialized hardware. They, it's not something they could do. Why not? It's not in their mandate to. Do that. Well, their mandate is to make money. So are they going to make money? If they're going to make money, they'll probably do it, right? So if they're not going to make money, if it's just a hobby, then that's a whole. That's not what I'm asking. Banks uh, make money by 
exchanging, um, pro providing financial services, exchanging uh, currencies as well. Uh, the largest bank in Africa, South African Bank, uh, has uh, started to do this as well. Uh, the uh, Bank of Sil Silicon Valley Bank, which is actually uh, an international bank, so it's across the United States as well as around the world, uh, is uh, starting to do that as well. Those are the first two. So. Actually, there are I'll some that, that are, <laughs> the, the first ones have started to uh, enter into this business. Right. Okay. Do, do you mean uh, just dealing with Bitcoin or actually mining Bitcoin? Um, providing Bitcoin services, selling Bitcoin, okay. uh, buying Bitcoin. I don't, I, I don't think that's how they'll actually be mining it. As well, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, four of the five big banks in Canada are well as well are dealing with uh, uh, Canadian virtual exchange. Mm -hmm. well, so, do you guys <laughs> suppose that you're just creating another source of revenue for the uh, traditional corporations that do this kind of thing? You're just you're putting all the volunteer work in to get this economy off the ground. Mm -hmm. And then once it becomes lucrative, do you suppose that the more established uh, the establishment businesses are going to swoop in and, and uh, basically, pardon the pun, but capitalize on your efforts? Uh, to some extent, maybe. But the part about mining is that it's, it democratizes whoever's running the majority of the mining gets to decide what the rules are, basically whether things are rolled back or not. And so mining is just a way of confirming the transactions that are legitimate and confirmed. And the miners get to then basically set the fees that people pay into the system to have their transactions confirmed. So they can set the fees more competitive than what banks are currently setting fees at. And that's why banks aren't necessarily interested as much immediately in the Bitcoin or Litecoin or other cryptocurrency mining systems because they can't take control simply through regulation. It's, they actually have to own the majority hashing rate of the mining system to then do bad things to the system or take it over. Well, that's what I'm, I'm asking about. Like, is that a possibility? They would have to own the majority of the computing power, meaning they'd have to own more clever, innovative computers that banks might be able to buy. Like they might be able to buy certain supercomputers in, in enough volume to take over to some degree. But mostly that's what the value of a carefully crafted cryptocurrency is, is that it can't be hijacked easily by a small faction like a bank. Even if it's a big five. Uh, the problem is that's not what we're seeing happening. The, the uh, uh, Satoshi's seminal paper uh, did use the phrase "one CPU, one boat." He didn't. He, he didn't even envision using GPUs to mine uh, Bitcoin. Uh, but now the hashing power is being uh, it, it, it is being concentrated. Uh, the, uh, um, it, it, if there is a if there is some mechanism that that, that is keeping uh, the uh, Uh, is keeping someone from um, controlling uh, the majority of the Bitcoin hashing power. It's that they would ha they would need this enormous capital expenditure to obtain that much hashing power, and then once people figure, uh, then people very quickly figure out that that's what had happened, and then the Bit and then the value of Bitcoin would. Uh, uh, 
plummet as people would abandon it because they could realize what happened. And therefore, there'd be very poor return on investment for anyone who wants to do that. But then, that doesn't uh, address the, cur the, the, uh, the concern of um, the slow concentration of hashing power, the boiling of frog. Well, let's hope we're not boiling frogs here, but we're about to get to the, uh, the next uh, stage of our event, which is to go over to O'Hanlon's and drink some beer and talk some more. So we'll, we'll wrap up unless there's any uh, final questions from the crowd uh, about Bitcoin or anything else discussed tonight. What he, what he just said reminded me of when you're a kid and you're, you're bro you've got a cake and your brother's trying to get the cake from you and you're like, if you keep trying, I'm just going to throw it on the floor. <laughs> you keep trying to take all my cake, then it's, no one's going to have it. That's like, the big, everyone would abandon it if all of a sudden one person is just monopolizing. Yeah, the, 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 the Bitcoin does not have the full faith and the full faith and trust of any nation. Uh, or it does kind of build in this poison pill against uh, uh, against a, it's called a 51% attack. Yeah. Yeah, mutually assured destruction is <laughs> built into Bitcoin in a way. All right, well, yeah. oh yeah, go ahead. So basically, it, your, your point was, with, if they actually did go with bigger computers, wouldn't you just be shooting yourself in the foot anyways? Because eventually, when the hash rate goes up, it's going to get more difficult, and then you just outdated yourself anyway. Yes, that, the difficulty also built in does uh, inhibit somebody's ability to invest in uh, lots of computers to try to take over things or do sabotage to the network because then it, it hurts their case because the difficulty uh, level, this, the difficulty setting for the, the mining of the coin goes up and their computer becomes less effective. All right, we'll leave other questions to, uh, to around the uh, tables at the bar. And thanks very much to uh, all of our speakers, uh, John, Dan, Andrew, and Nathan, uh, for sharing uh, economies, and, and thanks everyone for coming. Thanks,